and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful ring. This thing is large and in charge. I wore it out. This is no joke and I got so many compliments on it. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now my fingernails aren't the prettiest and my hands, I don't have those pretty long piano fingers but I still wore it out and I got lots and lots of compliments. I love the feel, the comfort, and it's just stunning. So that's our project for today. And I'm really excited because if you want to make it match um, your bracelet that I had a tutorial for, you can go ahead and match the colors and that would look really beautiful. Here's another colorway I have done off in green and I just left it so I can show you how to attach the band. I'm gonna pop my other ring on right now. We're gonna go ahead and get our materials together. So we're gonna be using some two-hold kite beads, some two-hold lentil beads, just four, some size eights, 11s, and 15s, and I could not wait to show you how beautiful this color is. It's called Galvanized Saffron. It's from Toho, and it's just beautiful. And then you're gonna need some spacers. And these are little tiny uh, three millimeters spacers. You'll need 16. I was looking for my copper ones, but I couldn't find them. But anyway, this, this will work just fine because this is my demo and I really wanted to show up, which is why I chose such really bold, loud colors. Then you'll need your stringing material, size eight fire line or eight pound, excuse me, scissors or a thread burner and a size 11 beading needle and one and a half yards of thread. And we're ready to go. Now my kite beads have two different colored. I'm gonna stick to one side, one color. I'm gonna pick up three from the upper holes, then little skinnier end, three kite beads, then two lentils, and then three more kite beads, and two more lentils. And I like keeping beginners in mind when I'm doing certain, um, when I'm working with certain beads. This is what the pattern should look like before I get sidetracked. Um, that way you're comfortable and not afraid to use them. So you'll drop them down. You're gonna leave a small tail and I'm gonna tie a knot like this and I want it to catch just like that and you'll feel it Wrap it around your fingers and pull really tight. We're gonna go ahead and pop a needle onto that tail. And yep, I'm out of needles, so I gotta use these little itty bitty size 10 short needles for the moment. <laughs> I'm just not used to the difference in the size. These are huge and these are shorts. So bear with me. Let's see, we're coming out of, the tail is, my tail is coming out of a kite bead. Oh, I lost my needle. Told you, it's the short ones. I don't like working with the short needles. Now I'm coming out of the kite bead. Just gonna run up through those two lentils and right here I'm gonna grab that thread space and pop in two knots. There's one and then two and then we're gonna just weave away. I'm gonna go just through that kite bead pull, pull tight and we're gonna burn that as close as we can. Okay, now we're ready to continue. Tail is done and out of the way. Don't have to worry about it. I'm coming out of a kite bead I'm gonna just go, go around, weave all the way around through all the beads again and take your time. If you have to go through one at a time, that's perfectly fine. You know me, I just have to move a lot faster. Make sure no threads get caught up on anything. And here we go. I'm coming to the point where I want to stop so come out this first lentil bead. So split them in half like this. 
come out the bottom hole of the lentil bead and I will zoom down a little bit for you guys. And now we're just gonna go through that upper hole of the lentil bead and pull. So it should look like this. And now I get to use my beautiful 15, so I'm gonna pick up three of those. I'll try to leave it down for as long as I can on the board. And we're just gonna run right into this upper hole of that kite bead, just like that. All right, now we're ready to add our beautiful kite beads again, but this time we're gonna pick up a spacer Oh, I really miss my needles, I'll tell you that. You get so used to working with them that this, I think this is a John James. I'm not comfortable working with them. It's not stiff enough, so <laughs> you have to bear with me on this wonderful Monday morning. All right, spacer, kite bead, spacer through the next kite bead like that pull so it should look like this now now we're just going to mirror what we did on that side so three fifteens into this first lentil right here and now I'm going to put an eight in between the lentils and we're gonna repeat that all the way around so I'm gonna pick up my work now just because I can't pull hard enough so three fifteens into this kite bead and now it's time for spacer and the wider end of our kite bead and a spacer and then we're going to go directly into the next kite bead and then one more spacer Kite bead spacer into that next space. And now we're at the part where we're gonna pick up our three beautiful 15s. And jump right into that upper hole of that lentil. I just picked up a thread and I don't wanna do that. Oh, I'm gonna have to take my bracelet off. I keep getting snagged. It's Monday, I'm telling you. Everything always goes wrong for me on Mondays. <laughs> All right, we'll pick up an eight now because we want to mirror what we did here. Go right through there. The lentil plus those three fifteens. That's where you want to be stepping out and give it a good pull. And now we are ready to pick up. Let's see where we are on the band on the ring. Okay, we're gonna pick up seven size 15s. And we're just gonna jump right into that upper hole of that kite bead. We're just dressing up the edge. And now I wanna add my top. So it'll be a spacer, the wide end and a spacer like that. Go straight across. And that's going to be your entire repeat. And I have to pull, like I said, because I want it to have that shape I'm going for. So we'll pick up seven 15s again. Go straight down those three 15s into that lentil. And into that eight lentil and three more. All we're doing is repeating what we did on one side to the other here. So now it's seven. Jump all the way up into that kite bead spacer. I wanna make sure I have all the right colors going in the right direction. Wide end, nope, wrong way. And a spacer. Let's see. Perfect. Seven more. OK, 
Okay, and we're gonna go down all these beads, 3 fifteens into the lentil, the eight, lentil. Now we'll go through all 10 fifteens and let's see if I get lucky and get it in one shot. Normally it does not happen, but no. So go through all those 15s, make sure you're not snagged anywhere until you come out here. All right, now we're gonna pick up six 15s plus one spacer. We're just stabilizing this bead right here so <clears throat> it doesn't move around, excuse me. Now a spacer and six 15s. And now we'll just run straight down because we want to repeat what we just did on this end to the other. And this is excellent for the work because it's going to straighten everything out as we go along. And that's why I had you pull that amount of thread because I'm going to be doing the herringbone band, which all of you know by now is one of my favorites. Um, especially when I decide on the style ring, I want to decide what fits and what will look right to me and be comfortable to wear as well. So I will be changing it up. I won't always be using the herringbone because I know you guys get a little tired of that. Three, four, five, six. And also, um, I do have a bracelet in the making. Still, I'm tweaking things. And I'm not going to use a button this time because I want to change that up too. So a spacer and six more. And we're already there. Now we'll just run down and we're going to pop out that size eight. And oh my goodness, I love this color. I absolutely love it. So we're already in. <clears throat> excuse me, right here, position to start the band, popping out of an eight. Don't worry if it's sagging in and all that. We're gonna fix all that up. Don't worry, everything will come out just fine. So the good news is, down with the 15s, we're just gonna strictly use just four size eights and some 11s. Everything else we're done with. Nice, simple, Monday project. All right, so we'll pick up an eight, two 11s, one eight, and now I'm coming out of the eight in this direction, downward. I'm gonna come around with my pattern on. This is what my pattern is. Come around, go through that eight, just like this, and pull. And now I need to straighten everything out, so I'm gonna run up through the eight, the 11, and then back down to the 11 and the eight, and then into the band, the main size eight right there, and then pop out this eight and that one 11, and pull really tight now. And I wrap it around my finger like this, it just gives me the best tension, and there's no gaps when you're building the band. So we're always gonna pick up two 11s now. Go down one. So I'm coming out this side. I'm gonna go down this side. And then right back up. These two, don't be stubborn, come on. There we go. Pull nice and tight. So it's always two 11s down the next stack and up those two. And I like to flip and flop as I go. So if you see me do that, it's just for tension. So two 11s, down one. And then I kind of will straighten it out with my finger like that a little bit. And then go right back up two. 
These are giving me trouble today. I, the, the coating on these is beautiful though. No, no, I'm gonna get snagged in there. Hold on a second. I'm just gonna pop that off a minute. I must have got, I must have snagged the middle center right there. And that's where I was going through and I did not want to cause a knot. So easier sometimes just to pop everything off the needle and start again. And as you get moving and you have something to hold on to, it goes a lot quicker. So two, down one, and then up two. That's all you have to remember. And that's it. And it's usually not this difficult. <laughs> all right. And pull. So two, I'll show you one more time, and then I'll show you how to attach it. I absolutely love these colors. I am not going to switch the silver. I like the silver in there. It kind of brings out that shimmer in the beautiful saffron color there. So no, I'm not going to switch it out. All right, so you would keep going until you have the desired length, but keep in mind that this is pretty wide, so you won't need to go far. I didn't have to make that many rows um, to get it to the middle. I wanted the middle fingers where I wanted my ring to be. So keep going until you have reached your desired length. Yes, I really like that a lot. Now, all I'm gonna do is turn my work and find that eight directly across. That's where we're gonna join. Figure out where you're coming out. So I'm coming out of the right side of this stack of 11s. I'm gonna put my finger in there, pick up an eight, just so the band doesn't twist. And I'm gonna pick up the eight in this direction. And then I'm gonna pick up one more eight and run right back down into the band. Just three beads or so. And whatever amount you go down, one, two, three, you wanna pick up the three on the other side so there's no thread showing. And then give it a good pull now. Here's where we're gonna to have to do some reinforcing because everything is very loose, I can feel it. This is your band and you want it to be as stable and strong as possible. And I just poked my finger there. So I'm just gonna run up and down and through. That feels great. Depending on how much thread you have left. I don't know why I don't have much on this one, but normally I would run down all the beads in the band and it just straightens everything out. And this is not crucial. This is just me. I like everything nice and sturdy and solid. And sometimes I go way overboard. All right. So I would weave up until I got to this other side, go through all the eights, and then back down. I'm not gonna make it. I don't have enough thread. Keeps wanting to pop off of there. Down the eight and then through all the beads again. <laughs> I don't want to slip. I don't want to slip today. All right. I'm going to stop because I have hardly any thread and it keeps sliding off the needle. So. I'm gonna burn, I wanna see these colors, what they look like on the mandrel. Ah, oh, that's stunning, I love it. That's what I wanted, just those kite beads to pop. And I think we definitely succeeded in doing that. Let's see what this one looks like. Let me try it, oh my gosh, this is so big because my fingers are chunky, but I love it. I absolutely love it. So I hope you liked today's project. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to my channel. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it and how much fun it is designing and playing with all these beads, all these new beautiful beads that are coming out with you guys and sharing my designs. 
And I also want to say thank you for sharing your pictures with me. I absolutely love sharing them to my Facebook page and it makes me very proud. You guys are great and have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.